Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Developing sad news just released about Baron Trump, president requesting prayers. This is perhaps one of the saddest news stories we have had to report on. A report in an online website, Inspiring Day, is now claiming that Baron Trump is now being verbally bullied at school because of who his father is and specifically the alleged affair between Donald Trump and Stormy Daniels, an event that allegedly took place over a decade ago. If this report is indeed true, then it's starting to look like the First Lady is considering how badly all this is taking a toll on their son while at the same time pondering if she should take him back to his old school and friends in New York. It's sad to see the president's son being bullied for something that is of no fault of his own. Barron wasn't even born when the alleged affair even happened. Social media has poured out tons of support for Barron as a result of the alleged bullying that's going on surrounding the scandal. What is truly heartbreaking about all this is the double standards we are seeing. We are now a nation which calls anything bullying, but this child gets bullied at his school and it may not be addressed by the school. This makes people wonder that if Chelsea Clinton was bullied when her father was caught in the White House with an intern 30 years younger than himself, that would Chelsea endure the same possible bullying? Probably not, because back then we all were convinced by the mainstream media that it didn't matter. It wasn't any of our business what the president did in the Oval Office, but it's now our business what Donald Trump, as a private citizen, did 12 years ago. Here is more on the Clinton scandal via U.S. News. 20 years ago. Major news outlets reported allegations that then-President Bill Clinton had a sexual relationship with a 22-year-old White House intern. Looking back, the Clinton-Lewinsky affair heralded a sea change in political discourse by normalizing public discussion of SX acts. Today, it is hard to believe that esteemed presidents, from Thomas Jefferson to John F. Kennedy, were sheltered from public judgment by a code of decorum that conveniently regarded the subject of SX as beneath the dignity of political discussion. That all changed in the Clinton days when terms like oral SX and semen stain were catapulted from the domain of hushed whispers to front-page news. The New Sexual Revolution. Fast forward to today, and once again the man sitting in the Oval Office is dogged by allegations of sexual misconduct. As a scholar who has examined public reaction to political SX scandals since the Clinton days, this is hardly where I expected we'd find ourselves in 2018. Twenty years ago. It seemed plausible that difficult conversations spurred by revelation of the Clinton-Lewinsky affair, about issues ranging from sexual harassment to the nature of sexual consent, would lead to lasting changes in the way women and men conducted themselves in the workplace, and well beyond. But how far have we really come? Sexual harassment remains prevalent. The election to the presidency of a man who boasts of pussy-grabbing is an indication that we still have a long way to go. Today, sexual harassment remains commonplace. Despite legal protections and the introduction of anti-harassment training in many workplaces, surveys report that between 25% to 85% of women say they have been SY harassed at work. Even the most conservative of these findings indicate a widespread problem. For women in certain employment sectors, including male-dominated industries like construction or service jobs where workers rely on tips to earn a living wage, rates of sexual harassment and sexual assault are likely to be far higher. The persistence of workplace sexual harassment is a powerful reminder that gender-based subordination pervades modern life. But that doesn't mean nothing has changed since the Clinton era. Looking back, three differences between now and then deserve our attention. First, no longer are the only men held to public account for sexual misconduct those who represent us in the most literal sense, elected officials. Today, prominent figures in entertainment, corporate America, sports and academia are facing public scrutiny for their actions. Already this has led to serious professional consequences for some and may even result in criminal prosecution for others. There is, however, a risk that the scope of the problem will be minimized by the media's focus on high-profile perpetrators and the mostly privileged, mostly white women who have drawn attention as victims. The notion that men made powerful by fame or wealth can abuse their power is easy to understand. But a person doesn't have to be rich or famous to have power over another. The fact is that anywhere there are gender relations, there are power relations. Second, as more accusations come to light, we are witnessing a shift in the terms of sexual discourse. In the past, the media has fallen into a Victorian era vernacular when reporting on sexual allegations involving prominent men. Think about it, when is the last time you heard a modern-day journalist use a term like adultery or chambermaid outside of covering a SX scandal? Marching to power. Now. The media faces sharp criticism for using the non-committal term sexual misconduct when discussing legally actionable crimes, including RE. 
The shift to more explicit language is important because it helps counter the idea that there is something inherently shameful about naming sexual abuse for what it is. Finally, Essex today is being discussed in terms that are not just personal, but political. In the Clinton era, women like Jennifer Flowers, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Wiley, Paula Jones and Monica Lewinsky paid a steep price in terms of their own privacy when allegations of presidential sexual misconduct arose. At the time, it often seemed as if these women were the main story. In contrast, today's scandalous revelations are quickly leading to conversations about questions of gender equality that implicate all of us. Meanwhile, social media campaigns like hashtag MeToo are drawing attention to the failure of the traditional media to make space for victims to speak in their own voices and on their own terms. Twenty years ago, millions around the world learned of a sexual affair between a president and a young intern. Two decades and countless SX scandals later, stories of SX in power are still roiling the public. This time, however, they are also galvanizing a broad-based movement with concrete demands for change. It's been a long time coming, and I hope there is no turning back. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.